You find yourself in a conversation that you didn't ask for. It was completely unsolicited. It was started by a total stranger. What do you do? Or maybe I'm asking you a little bit in a general sense whether you are more extroverted or introverted. You know, are, are you the kind of person who just dives right into that conversation and you just can enjoy it? Making that small talk or, or getting to know somebody completely foreign to you? Or are you the kind of person who almost immediately is kind of frantically, anxiously, desperately trying to find your escape route? And get out of that conversation. You know, maybe you're trying to, you're, you're walking that line because you want to be clear, but also polite and not rude and blunt, but you really don't want to be having that conversation. And so you look for those escape routes and, and how you can get out of the conversation. You kind of provide those little short one-word answers that you hope will suffice the seeming onslaught of questions from your obviously extroverted interrogator, really just somebody trying to be friendly, but not for you, right? That's, that's not you. And maybe you're just trying to get out of it. Have you ever been in one of those conversations? They're trying to escape, but that escape is blocked at every angle. True confession, sometimes... If there's a conversation that I'm not really that interested in, then I sometimes just kind of mumble along those, those little answers. They really don't reveal anything about myself or my character. Don't allow that conversation to help that relationship to grow any deeper because, well, maybe I just I don't want to be in that conversation. Have you ever been in that conversation that you just want to shut it down. But what if it's Jesus who wants that conversation? Do you shut it down then? Jesus once met a woman a woman that he really wanted to have a very important conversation with, and she tried to shut it down. Again and again and again, she tried to shut the conversation down, but Jesus wouldn't allow that. You see, Jesus had decided that it was time for he and his group of traveling companions, his followers, he decided it was time for them to go back to the area around his hometown, to Galilee. And there were two routes that were available to him. The first would have him crossing over the Jordan River twice, but it would allow him to go through the region of Perea, which was inhabited by his fellow countrymen, by fellow Jews. And so that was the route that was most often chosen. That was a route that was preferred by Jewish pilgrims and travelers because it avoided the territory of the hated Samaritans. That was the other option. Go through Samaria. And so it's a little bit interesting that as John relates the life of Jesus in his biography, he says about Jesus, now he had to go through Samaria. Geographically, logistically, he didn't. There was another route that he could have gone. But spiritually, divinely, lovingly, he was compelled to go through Samaria. His great compassion moved him to take that route so that he could meet this woman at this well and he could have this conversation. 
he began the conversation because he wanted to connect to her. He began that conversation because he wanted to reach her. No matter if she was lost. And actually, especially because she was lost. He cared deeply for her. And so when this woman came out to the well, Jesus began the conversation that really shattered all the cultural norms of that time. Right? Men wouldn't speak to unknown women alone like this. And not only that, but she was part of the abhorred Samaritans. Plus, she was coming out to the well in the middle of the day. Did you catch that? In the middle of the day, the hottest part of the day, she was coming out to the well alone, either because of the shame that she felt or because of the ridicule and the scorn that she would have felt had she gone to that well when others were around. And so this woman thought that she had all the ammunition that she needed to just shut this conversation down immediately when she says, you're a Jew. I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you possibly be asking me? How can you be talking to me? But Jesus pressed on. He said, if you knew the gift of God, and if you knew who it was that's asking you for a drink, you would have asked him. And he would have given you living water. And so Jesus really shows that he's a little bit more extroverted because he's immediately he's revealing something about himself to her. He says, I, I'm somebody special and unique, and I have an amazing gift that I want to give to you. Th this living water that I want to give to you that is so much better than everything that you've been searching out and everything you've been looking for and you haven't been able to find in all of your life, and I'm going to give it to you. But she tried to shut the conversation down again. You don't have anything to draw the water with. The, the well is deep. And, and are you greater than our father Jacob? Now who was this man to say that he could give her living water? And when Jesus continued and, and he explained then that this living water could actually become a, a spring of water that would well up inside of her for eternal life. Well, then, then she was intrigued and she said, yes, okay, give me this living water. And, and so Jesus invited her and said, go call your husband and come back. And then she shut down the conversation again. I have no husband. But Jesus continued all these tactics that she employed to end and escape this conversation but Jesus wouldn't allow it because Jesus he isn't always who we want him to be but he is always who we need him to be and this woman needed Jesus to seek out the lost. And you do too. And that need that she had, it is highlighted by the final way in which she tried to shut down this conversation for good. When she had deflected away from her own relationships and she had begun to talk about worship sites and, and rites and places and styles and and Jesus had said, well, true worshipers worship God in spirit and in truth. And she was done with the conversation. She said, no, I, I don't need you because I know that the Messiah is coming. And when the Messiah comes, well, then he will explain everything to us. So I don't need you. And then Jesus was able to answer and say, 
I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Jesus was the Messiah that she needed, and Jesus is the Messiah that you and I need. And so he is not willing to let the conversation end. You know, Jesus asked for a drink because he had living water to offer. Jesus is greater than Jacob because he gives so much more than a well. Jesus is the one in whom all of our desires, our desires for love and fulfillment and security, all of those are met in Jesus and they can be met in nowhere else. You think about this woman She had had five husbands and was now with a man that was not her husband. Even in our modern culture, that would seem pretty remarkable. And what had she been so desperately seeking that she wasn't able to find it in five people? What was she so desperately seeking that she had now just completely given up on the concept and the commitment of marriage itself because she had become too tired, too disappointed in all those men? Now, we don't know anything about these relationships. We're not told anything. It's just conjecture. But you do know relationships. And you know how they can be messy and and you know how you've been disappointed by other people in the past. How they've let you down. The things that you seek out in other people and in those relationships. And so perhaps this woman, perhaps she just, she wanted to be loved. For her to feel the embrace of someone that she knew cared deeply for her and always would have her best interests in mind. Someone who would honor her and strengthen her and stand by her side when she was sad and she was angry, when she felt alone. And perhaps this woman sought someone to, to meet her needs to support her. You know those basic needs like food and clothing and shelter, but then those emotional needs. Maybe she wanted to find security, that security of knowing a partner who will walk through life with you, who who will never abandon you, who has your back, who is on your side always. Whatever it was that she was seeking, love, security, fulfillment, whatever it was, she hadn't found it in these five men, these six men, and in her pursuit of it, she had become so lost. Five men hadn't fulfilled it. She wasn't likely to find it in that sixth because people are imperfect and people are selfish and people fail us. And people will walk away, they will, they will give up on us, especially when we push them away, right? They're not willing to always fight for us, even though maybe even as we're pushing them away, that's exactly what we need. We need them to push back. We need them to stay in our lives. We need them to stay by our side and push through our own defenses because we need someone greater. But people will often give up on us. And maybe, maybe that's what we think we want from Jesus. Maybe sometimes we think that we just want Jesus to, to give up, to stop pushing, just, just leave me alone. Let me be. But Jesus doesn't. Because that's not the Jesus that we need. Jesus doesn't stop when you try to push him away. He pushes back. 
lovingly and gently, but also firmly. He pushes back and and he stays and he continues the conversation because he wants to get to the true needs of our heart. Because when we're searching for our deepest needs in anyone other than God, that's when we become lost. That's when we, we lose our way and we don't know our surroundings around us. We don't know what our decisions and our choices and our lifestyles, where they've really taken us. But Jesus guides us. And so Jesus, he opened the door for this woman and he shone a light so that she could see how lost she had become. She could see how her surroundings now were unrecognizable. And he didn't do so in an accusatory, condescending, judgmental way. He he simply spoke truth. He spoke truth clearly and honestly And he led her to see how when she sought all of her desires and her wants and her needs in the wrong places, her soul had this deep need, this deep thirst. But it hadn't been fulfilled. She had a deep thirst for love, for security, for joy, and those things could only be fulfilled by Jesus. That's why he offered her this living water to meet all of her truest needs. And so many of us too, we are thirsting for love. We're thirsting for security, for peace, for a future, for companionship. And sometimes we get so fixated and so focused on what we're searching for that that we become lost. We don't recognize how our surroundings, our life, how how it's completely changed. You know, maybe we've become lost because our appreciation for the Word of God, it has waned. Maybe we've become lost because we forgot that our identity is found as a child of God and a child of Christ. Maybe we become lost because we we don't recognize our true purpose in this life. Maybe we become lost in the sea of, of selfishness in our actions. Whatever it is, Jesus will start the conversation. And when he starts that conversation, you're going to be tempted to shut it down. You're going to be tempted to walk away, but don't. You're going to be tempted to shut it down because of your guilt or your shame, or your fear, but don't. Don't shut that conversation down with you because Jesus is the one that you need him to be. And he is willing to seek out the lost. He is willing to walk the path to find us. Because he was willing to walk a path That didn't just take him through a territory where he would be disliked, but he was willing to walk a path where he would be hated. Hated by other human beings, but also hated by God himself. Hated because he was carrying our sins upon him. Jesus would walk a path where he would cry out, I thirst, not because it had been a long journey but because the culmination of his life was a hilltop with three crosses and the one in the center was his. And he was willing to go and die on that cross for you. He was willing to take that road. And he was willing to take this road through Samaria to meet this woman. Do you think that there is any path, any road that he will not take to find you? Do you think that there is any path that is too difficult for Jesus? Do you think that there is any any sin, any guilt, any shame, any wrong turn that you have taken in your life that is too much for Jesus to walk and seek you out and find you? There is none. Because Jesus is who we need him to be. He seeks out the lost and Jesus continues the conversation. 
You know, sometimes we think that we maybe want that Jesus who stops. He stops trying. He stops going after us. He stops pursuing us. He stops asking the questions to help us to see where our heart is at. But that's not the Jesus we need. We need the Jesus who keeps pushing, who keeps the conversation going, who keeps asking those questions so that we see how much we need him. And when we cry out, Lord, I need a Savior, Jesus can say, I, I the one who am speaking to you, I am he. That's what we're truly thirsting for in our life. It's Jesus and all that he has to offer. He meets all of our needs. And so my friends, are you ready for Jesus to be the one that you need him to be? Are you ready for Jesus to come to you and to start that conversation? And will you engage or will you try to shut it down as he begins that conversation, as he comes to you in his word, through his messages that reveal sin but also declare grace? Continue on in that conversation. Even as he highlights for us how the things that we have pursued in this life have not fulfilled us. That our selfish pursuits have not acknowledged and worshipped God in spirit and in truth. The truth that recognizes that God is our almighty creator and so that everything that we are and everything that we have really belongs to him. The truth that Jesus is our savior who has redeemed us with his own blood and so we are not our own, but we can live our lives every single day to thank and praise him for his sacrifice. To worship God in spirit and truth, a truth that acknowledges that he has sent the Holy Spirit into our hearts so that we are empowered to live a new life for him. Jesus seeks out the lost because the lost rarely seek him out. And so even as you know that Jesus has had this conversation with you and he will continue to do so, you also know that there are others. There are others out there, others in your life who like this woman need to meet Jesus. Need to have Jesus begin this conversation need to know that he is the one who provides fulfillment and peace and meets all their needs, those needs that they so desperately try to fill in other places. And they drink from the poisoned well of this world that only has death as the result. But you, you have an amazing message to share with them. You can tell them about the Jesus they need, the Jesus who offers living water. And so knowing that, maybe, maybe we will become those strangers who start the conversation so that we can share Jesus and the living water that he offers. Amen.